we have weapon mastery, which has a significant impact on so many classes, subclasses, all these characters that has completely changed the game. Can you tell me more about this? Weapon mastery properties are brand new properties that we have assigned to all of the game's simple and martial weapons. And you must have a class feature that allows you to unlock weapon mastery to be able to use those properties. And so what this means is if a wizard, for instance, who does not have a weapon mastery feature, picks up a weapon, that weapon is going to function the way they expect it to from the 2014 rules. Although a number of weapons have had some tweaks made to them in addition to the weapon mastery properties. However, if you are a character whether you are a fighter, a barbarian, a rogue, a paladin, a ranger, or someone who has otherwise unlocked uh, the ability to use weapon mastery, suddenly when you use the, the dagger, because of your mastery with the weapon, you will be able to unlock its mastery property. And each weapon has a specific mastery property from a list of properties that has been assigned to it. And so with the dagger, that property is a property called Nick. It allows you to benefit from the extra attack that the light property in the dagger gives you without having to spend your bonus action on it. It's simple, but powerful. Because what that suddenly means is the person who has decided to focus their mastery option on daggers They've just freed up their bonus action to do something else with it. This is just a great example of how weapon mastery powerfully transforms how certain characters use their weapons. Uh, there are other weapons that have uh, a property called graze. And if your character unlocks the graze property in a weapon, that means that you are so good at using that weapon that you will always manage to at least graze your target even if you missed. Uh, and again, transformative. Now, no character in the player's handbook has access to every mastery property simultaneously. Just as a spellcaster has to choose the cantrips that they know from a larger list of available cantrips for their class, the characters who have the weapon mastery property choose a certain number of those properties that they have unlocked. And how you make that choice is you choose the weapon. So for instance, if you're playing a class that lets you unlock two mastery properties, you would choose two weapons. You might pick dagger and short sword. And that means you get to use the mastery properties of those two weapons. Some classes are able to have more mastery properties unlocked at one time than others. The, the leader of the pack in that regard is the fighter. The fighter is the master of weapon mastery. The fighter, uh, over the course of their career, they are able to have more and more mastery properties unlocked at a time. And then even at a higher level, they get to a point where they are able to also swap in certain mastery properties over other mastery properties. Yeah. But we'll talk more about that when we dig but into that, the that fighter. Get, yeah, that's amazing though. There are other properties that push people back. There's topple, where you can knock someone down with uh, the battle axe, for instance, that has the topple mastery property. You can choose your weapons to combo with each other in different ways. A great example of this is the short sword has the vex property. And vex, when you hit somebody with a weapon that has the vex property and you've unlocked that property, yeah it means your next attack roll against them has advantage. Well, we, we carefully constructed the mastery property selections to benefit different sort of class fantasies. So in this case, this is all about empowering the rogue to be able to set themselves up 
with advantage for their next attack so that then that attack has uh, sneak attack. So it can sneak attack. And there are things like that throughout. Uh, ranged weapons, because again, mastery properties aren't just on melee weapons. For example, the longbow has the slow property. And the narrative here is imagine you're, you're hitting someone in like a leg or somewhere else that is going to slow them down. When you think about the long range of the longbow, this allows you yeah. to keep that creature way over there because you are making it harder and harder for them to reach you. Yeah. Uh, and again, the, the tactical possibilities start multiplying, particularly if you have weapon mastery and you're also playing a class that eventually gets extra attack because you can start using one weapon for one of those attacks and another weapon for the other one and exploit their different mastery properties to create some fascinating tactical combinations yourself. So the great club has push, which makes perfect sense. You can knock someone back 10 feet, but a heavy crossbow, it's perfect because if you want to knock someone off a cliff, if you want to shoot someone right off the wall of a castle, that has a new element of strategy now. And right there too, you see, when you compare the mastery properties on the different weapons, adding them allowed us to bring out some of the narrative differences among these weapons in a way that we never could before. Right. So if you compare the heavy crossbow to the longbow, one of them is slowing, the other one is pushing, that's actually an example of us being able to finally show how being hit in the real world by those two weapons feels different right. because a crossbow hits with a force because of the mechanism. The longbow does not necessarily. I mean, they're both. You don't want to be hit by you either of them. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun for us to look at how can we actually bring these weapons to life in a way we never could before now that we have weapon mastery. Everyone has the option of taking a feat uh, that unlocks some weapon mastery. So we wanted to make sure that no matter what class that you're playing or subclass, you have the ability to dip your toe into this pool through the feat system. And there's also SAP, which gives that target disadvantage. SAP is uh, perfect against a foe that's actually really scary and you want you want to impose disadvantage on their attack rolls. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, there are a number of weapons that have sap and like the mace, uh, the spear, and it again, really good against the scarier uh, foes. But also another example of us looking at ways to enhance not only the narrative of different weapons, but also key into certain class fantasies better. So the mace, often associated with the cleric, and clerics have traditionally been all about protecting their friends. And so we were particularly eager to then put sap on the mace because sap is all about diminishing how scary someone else is to your group. Whereas other weapons have mastery properties that are all about uh, you know, knocking people down or setting up your next attack. How many times can you use weapon mastery? Is this every attack you can use that weapon mastery? Yes. So if you have the weapon mastery unlocked on a weapon that you're using, it's designed so that you can theoretically be benefiting from the mastery property every time that you hit with the weapon, or in some cases, like with the Graze property, when you miss <laughs> with the weapon. Uh, and it is because of that design that we kept the mechanical weight of these mastery properties very uh, light. Um, we wanted them to be very impactful but not a huge slowdown in play. Yeah, and so, not, not tremendously complex exactly, by themselves. Exactly. So they are very weighty in terms of what they do, but they are not highly complex because 
particularly in the hands of a character who starts getting many attacks. Like think about a high level fighter yeah. who can just attack, attack, attack. Uh, we wanted to make sure that because these are getting applied potentially over and over again, that they weren't going to bog the game down. And so that was a huge focus of our internal playtesting is making sure that these each meet the goal of being really spicy and fun and create tactical interest while at the same time not bogging down play. We talked about this before, but now when you see one of these weapons in play, you have a different context. It is not just a dice roll now when you see a great axe. When you see a crossbow, it's not just getting hit by a bolt. It's you may get pushed back 10 feet and fly right off a cliff. So there's a new context uh, emotionally <laughs> and, and narratively uh, for what these weapons are now. They mean something extra. Well, especially for the DM because yeah. it is primarily going to be monsters that are yeah, yeah, facing yeah. this. Absolutely. And... But it also uh, means that players can be much more interactive with each other in setting combos up. Because now if you know, all right, that crossbow isn't just going to do damage, but it might also displace the target, that creates a tactical situation for the group to uh, have fun thinking about that wasn't there before. It's very simple though, but that is by design as you mentioned. But it's had a tremendous impact in playtest and even your home game. Oh, the weapon mastery transforms every battle. Uh, and again, we had to make sure that the complexity level was low yeah. because of how often it can happen. Uh, and I can say in our playtests that uh, it has succeeded at delivering the fun and the tactical interest that we wanted. Uh, I, in the playtest, spent most of my time playing a fighter, and I had a ball uh, creating, especially as the fighter was higher level and had more and more masteries unlocked. I loved being able to play this mini game of, all right, at first I want to use this weapon because of this mastery property. Then my next attack will be this one where I can exploit what I did what, with the previous weapon. Super fun. The New Player's Handbook is available for pre-order right now on D&D Beyond. You can find that link in the video description. And you can also find the New Core Rulebooks bundle for pre-order both physical and digital. Thank you so much for watching. We have a ton of video content coming out about the new player's handbook and all the new core rule books, the new monster manual, the new dungeon master's guide. So be sure to check out all of that content and thank you for watching.